I'm gonna finish cutting these and then you wanna go to the template. Super, super, yeah. super cool. So I'm Colin Fisher. Um, this class is uh, Environmental Design Studio, where we look at um, different design problems to try to tackle them. Um, so right now we're looking at beehives and we're redesigning it, and then we're actually gonna end up building it for field use. We wanted to focus a lot on like ease of accessibility. So what we ended up doing, as you can see up here, like we had a lot of sketches, and we started with the idea of using a hexagon because that's what the bees use in their honeycomb, and so we wanted to go off of something that the bees are familiar with, even if, if they won't really realize it on the outside. And um, what we really noticed about the Langstroth hive is that they it's really hard to unstack all of the boxes in order to get to the bottom frames, if that's what you need to be seeing. And so we knew that visibility and ease of access was a huge problem, and so we wanted to find a way to create a research hive that was more easily used. We designed a beehive um, to kind of just try and get a better idea of what bees actually need. So the Langstroth beehive, which is the standard beehive in beekeeping right now, hasn't been redesigned in 120 years because it hasn't been effective. No redesigns of it have been effective. And so what we did, set out to do is make something that's effective for both the beekeepers and the bees. And so we did that in a couple of different ways. Okay, so for our beehives, we decided to make our bottom boxes, which are called deeps, bit lighter because originally these boxes on the Lake Shop Hive are maybe 20 pounds when they're full, which is a little hard to pick up, especially for you know smaller people that can't lift a paper box. So what we did is we kept the same volume overall by adding three boxes, but each one is slightly smaller, so they're about 60 pounds rather than 120, which is a big difference. We also added these nice handles so you can get some leverage on here and really have them up or even have two people. And then what we also did is we added this nice roof, so the roof itself allows snow to just slide off rather than it on the top. And then on the inside of my roof, we have this nice feeder so that in winter when the bees are hungry and can't get nectar normally, we can take this out, fill it up with sugar water, it has little holes in there for the bees, just screw it right in. <laughs> and then what normally happens in these beehives is they put a second box on the top and just stick the feeder in and then there's a bunch of open air around the feeder and it's cold and the bees won't even use the feeder because it's cold and they like it to be 95 degrees, not 30 or whatever it is outside in Colorado. So what we did is we insulated the inside of our roof so that it stays nice and warm around the feeder and then they will actually use it. This is also a nice convenient space for storage of extra materials.